All right. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. I am trying to get some warm up drawings going on. Good morning. Hey, James. Hey, James. Yes. Can I steal your show for five? Are you in your studio? Maybe. Can I, can I steal the show for five? Well, what? Go ahead and talk about what you want to talk about. Let's. Um, I'll let you. Uh, I would like to show everybody the studio, if yeah. I may. All right. Um, I don't know how do I reverse the camera angle. That I can't help you <laughs> because I, right. I'm here and you are there, but um, might want to. Maybe there's oh. a there's a little camera icon. You could also. I got it. Cool. You can't see the sign so well, but. Awesome. So you're showing us the interior of the new space. This is the waiting area. And that's where they check in. And then this is the hallway. I'm gonna check out. And that's always fun. This consultation room is pretty big. We haven't decorated yet. This is an open studio area. Long hallway. Happy Mia, that way. Big Mia is always important. Flanges so you can see yourself, your nice. angles. <laughs> this is my apprentice Army's room. She's got some good stuff going on. She's far more amazing than I am, and that's no joke. Well, um, it, looks, uh, uh, it looks really cool in there. It's very clinical. Has a very yes, sir. Look like a clinic, so uh, it'll be really exciting to see the tattoo aesthetic start to, you know, start to emerge out of all the. Uh, and then and all, and this the is the nurses area, right? and this then the yeah, this is my tattoo area. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. I appreciate you letting me take the time to show you. No, of course. Uh, I'm, it looks uh, it looks like a really cool tattoo, like a tattoo spot. So, but Thanks. also it looks like a doctor's office kind of. So that's okay. We're doing therapeutic and medical tattoos too. So awesome. it works out. We uh, we're building uh, pamphlets and flyers to reach out to the medical community. We have a nurse on staff. I have one other uh, artist, myself, and then um, we have another gentleman that might, he's really good, well known. Um, he worked at DJ's here. I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, but yeah, so good stuff. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It looks uh, so didn't mean to hijack so it. happy for you. Yeah, that's so. I think that you know having a having a place where you can you know share your good news uh, I think that's that's really important and um, it's been very cool to watch uh, this this uh, you know develop so again evolution to, yeah can't wait to see what uh, what comes up next now like the hard work begins um, Facts. <laughs> well, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm I'm real excited for this, and uh, so so congratulations. Um. Anyway, uh, thank I, I you. Have done it uh, we're just got a chance to see Creature's new tattoo <laughs> studio, and uh, I, and so um, if this is working for you, you can let us know in the chats. We always love uh, we always love hearing from everybody. I'm just getting warmed up. Okay. Which is going on. And if you are out there with us and you want to draw along, 
I like to start off with a couple of these ellipses. So making ellipses. I'm again thinking about like getting warmed up. I want my hands to get warmed up. I want my I want to make that connection between my body and my mind as it were. So I am not too concerned with how these look right now, just letting them be. Letting them be rough, getting the rough going on. Whoa. Pardon me, sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Like a, um, I lived right on one of the busiest intersections in my entire county. And sometimes it gets a little rough. No worries. I miss Ooh. living in the woods and the sticks where it's quiet. Mm. Sometimes hearing those sounds of, you know, like, I don't know, crickets begging for sex. It's sort of, <laughs> that can be equally kind of uh, disconcerting. Crickets, right? the bullfrogs in the spring. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm feeling warmed up, everybody. And this is, uh, you know, just as something that I like to, uh, to, to draw with you, to sketch with you, and to also, it looks like a, it looks kind of like a bear today, I think. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Unconscious, unconscious lunar thing that I drew. I'm stretching out, stretching out my. I love the, I love the bear. Thanks. No thanks. All right. Yes. Stop. Thank you. Oh well, if my computer crashes and dies in the middle of our stream today, you know, forgive me. All right, so I'm stretching out, right? I'm stretching out my wrists. Can't encourage you all enough, right? To just uh, do a little stretch, I, right? Stretch and then both directions. This is going to help you have a long career. Seems fun. I've started stretching the whole body from head to toe every morning. Excellent. It's kind of become a necessity to be able to move after I get out of bed. I have to stretch everything, or it's not going to work. Excellent. Well, um, once you get into the habit of doing it, uh, I think you'll be able to go without it, like you say. So, welcome, everybody. Drawing for Tattooers, um, episode 92. Can't believe it. It's, um, it's just flown by, right? It's flying by. You know, when I saw 92, I was like, oh my god, we're at 92. Oh. I, 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 I'm, it's an approximation, I'm sure. I don't I don't know if that's... Uh, it's at least that many, but I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know if that's the... If that's exactly the correct one. I'm bad about it. Um, Guess bad. what I saw on YouTube the other night? I was really late at night, and I was really bored, and I was going through a bunch of old reinventing stuff. Mm. And I found the first episode of Drawing for Tattoos. Well, I hope you uh, hit the hit the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hoot. You gotta it was hit so those like buttons for us, because that's the um, you know shameless plug. But that's the way you know that's the way that that everything. The way the algorithm mm. picks it up. <laughs> Yeah, no, I thank you for uh, thank you for that, and thank you for for being a part of it. Thank you all for being a part of it. If you're watching us today, um, you know, know that we're part of uh, reinventing the tattoos extended network, um, and so you can always learn more about reinventing the tattoos by <laughs> reinventing the tattoo uh, dot com. And I, I have the fun here. I have a QR code. I'll, I'll try to share. Having some computers being extra. This is being extra today. All right. Are you so, having a mind? Right, yes. Yeah, so up. Um, should, should show it. 
Yeah, there it is. So up in the corner there, there's a QR code that's um, where you can learn more about reinventing the tattoo. So please uh, scan the QR code and uh, go check out reinventing. What's up, creature? How, how, how do you do the QR code? I don't understand how they work. Totally. No, that's a great question. That's so a game. Gonna your, yeah, you're going to take your phone and you're going to like activate the camera and then you're going to put it on the QR code and scan it. Oh. And so uh, that code will take you directly to uh, reinventingthetattoo.com where, again, you can sign up for all different co- kinds of courses. There's the evolution course, which is uh, which has just began. I don't think I don't think you can sign up for that right now, but certainly get updates on when uh, that is available. So um, now, is that part of Gabe's whole thing? Well, that's Guy's thing. So that's Guy actually. Oh, okay. I was just and- wondering if that was the. I mean, the QR code. Is that part of what Gabe sets up for you with his system? So Gabe uh, definitely can set up uh, those things. Um, I had a feeling. Yeah, yeah, they're um, <laughs> you know, that's the thing. They're pretty. Uh, they're pretty handy. So learning how to make them, I think, is really a, it's a useful skill. So uh, you can put them on your business cards. You can put them in your booth. And so I think, yeah, um, people really got used to it, especially during the pandemic. Because like you go, you, know, you go out to a restaurant or something during the pandemic, and they, you wouldn't have a menu, they'd be like, "All right, scan this and get the menu." Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of people, a lot of restaurants stayed with that. So, how do you scan the QR code if you only have your phone? So, like right now, I'm watching and interacting, and the QR mm-hmm. code, I can see it. But I can't do anything to it or with it or interact with yeah. it. No, that is a limitation. I don't know how okay. else you would do it. Except do you for have the, a way to watch it back on a laptop or TV? Right, right. Later on, oh. you go back. You can put it on a screen, and then you can you can yeah, you know, capture the QR code okay. with your screen. So those are different ways that you can, uh, you know, that you can start to uh, interact with them. But again, I think uh, um, having them there—it's an easy. It's easy to get you there, but you can always, uh, uh, again, like learn more. Visit reinventingthetattoo.com. We got chat going on here. What's going on in the chat? Cool. Yes. So Kyle Olson says, uh, "How exciting!" Um, Hi, Kyle. I think that's in reference to Creatures' new. Oh. Oh. So, Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> yes. Yes, ex- exactly. Yeah, Kyle, great to hear from you. Hope you're doing well. Um, Spirit, everybody that's uh, everybody that's around, it's good to, good to catch up with everybody. Well, um, I had something that I wanted to share. I, in the thumbnail, I referenced this barg. The Bard, exploring the Bard. That's the that's the thing that uh, that I claimed we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go over today. And so um, I'd like to I'd like to share that with you. Let's see if I can hide this. Get this. So many fun uh, so many fun features on this streaming platform that we're using restream um but it does take a bit of uh of engineering to uh, to get it all figured out anyway please scan the qr code uh, you can go to reinventing and find out more about the community uh let's let's get into our text because we have a um we're going to uh let's see hmm. um, Stop sharing and huh. thanks for hanging in there uh, during these technical <laughs> difficulties, gang. Um, we are we are almost set, and uh, yes, this and now I can share this with you. 
Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Yay. Yeah. So hopefully you are seeing my seeing some text that came up. So this is from the book, uh, and I'll share a, I'll share a QR code for it. This is for the uh, Charles Bard Drawing Method. It's, it's a huge book. It's an amazing book. I'm not gonna, you know what I mean. It's a really an amazing book, and um, and we'll uh, certainly, you know, I'll show that QR code later. Um, it is a big book. If you can notice over here, it's like 200 pages. So um, I want to get into, uh, you know, a little bit of this text so that way we can, you know, do a little reading, do a little bit of, uh, you know, theorizing and stuff. But what I figured would be nice, uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to show the whole book, but what I figured would be nice is if you know, just to give you a, a, like a little taste of what is in this book. Again, it is like hundreds of pages of of these of these drawings um so here's some here's just some of these you know like line drawings if you like they're very um they're very simplified right? a very simplified kind of approach you can see so is there any reaction to you know sort of the training of art students uh in in france uh, the, in the like 1800s, there was this system that that got developed um, by Charles Barg, and so he's trying to bring us to this, uh, you know, very simplified geometry, right, of the whole figure, right, trying to like include this, you know, the figure as it is, as a, you know, as a as an entirety, so you don't get lost in these details, as it were. Um, you're thinking about like a, a whole, uh, you know, a whole relationship, as it were. So, um, yes. So, um, so we can see like there's a very simplified kind of uh, line drawing here on the top, and then a more refined one, you know, with a little bit of rendering. So hopefully that's starting to you know to make sense. Here we go. Some ears, a plate of ears, if you like. Uh, starting to become a little bit more intricate, if if you will, more detailed. Something that I think is really interesting too is uh, if, you know, if we kind of zoom in and we look like this is all rendered in crosshatching. Right? <laughs> Very carefully modeled, you know, uh, where the shadow shapes are. So you can see very simple, set of lines that give you the the overall basic shapes and you can, you can kind of accept it that you know that there's not as much accuracy there but this gives you this basic rough where you start to refine it and then where do the shadows go it's not a lot of uh you know mid tones everywhere where is the extreme shadows where are they located I think that the other thing, you know, uh, to keep in mind here, it's not crazy wild, you know, shading all over the place, scratchy scribble. Not that there's anything wrong with that necessarily, but in this case, this is just, this is, this is an approach we're exploring. Um, and so you can see like, you know, when we get, when we get here, if we zoom in, it might be a little, might be a little pixelated in my version here. But this isn't like blended together, you know what I mean? Like with a stump or like your finger or something like that, right? It's very carefully, it's modeled with like very, very carefully laid in hatch. So the hatch would be hatched on top of itself and then you would start to get this gray. Um, so. Yeah, that would be like cross hatching, right? Exactly, exactly. But uh, I think that, the, you know, it's, it's a part of our almost tendency to, you know, to, not be patient and to, you know, to really want to like smudge it. Yeah. To, to smudge it around and stuff. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that, you know, that can't be done, but there also is this whole, uh, you know, there's something valuable, I think, you know, in, in like practicing these approaches mm. and what, so this 
all this all these drawings and stuff the the whole point of it is that you can you know you're you're learning how to uh, accurately depict objects and nature and, and whatever it doesn't make you an artist that's what the book you know definitely you know makes that much clear it doesn't make you an artist to be able to do this but working out your technical capacities and stuff um can help you solidify what it is that you want to eventually start to uh, to produce as a as a work of art so students would begin uh, by looking at like a plaster cast. So they'd have like a foot that would be a sculpture, right? It'd be in a shadow box or something. You can see like, yeah, you can't start with all the details here of these nails, toenails and stuff, <laughs> you know, don't start there. Instead, look to this very, this is a very basic shape inside of a what, a triangle, right? So you could accurately depict this triangle Right, that has a has a, certainly has a ninety degree angle here within it, and then relating where it is in terms of inside versus outside. Further modeling, and then finally you're getting to like a very highly rendered uh, degree. Here's just a few more. Um, again, I, I can't. I wish I could show the whole book because there is, like I said, hundreds of pages of just beautiful rendering. We, it starts off slow, right? Some feet. Some, look at those. Look at the, it's just wow. like, it's so, it's so graphic, right? It's, you know, again, oh. it might be tough to appreciate at this point. Foot. If you've ever drawn a foot before, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. talking about. Difficult. <laughs> so yeah, it's very challenging to, uh, to draw. That, I draw love how part. dynamic the difference between the shadow mm -hmm. part and the light part is. There's such the lines are you know differentiated. It's almost yes. like a paint by number. Well, um, it's so complicated in real, you know, in re in reality. But it, it's, it's rendered to look so simple. Exactly. So we've got all of these. <laughs> And I was thinking about it, you know, uh, there's a lot of conversations around this idea of, uh, you know, like AI. Uh, so if you want to beat AI at your, you know, its own game, like here you go, like draw, draw some hands like this, you know, like <laughs> work on some hands like this, right? AI can't quite keep up with it, at least not yet. But, <laughs> but anyway. Um, AI still can't make anything without its database of images that it had to take from humans making them. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, again, we we might not be so different, you know, but at the same time, um, we really are uh, trying to demystify it, I think. Like, when you get to something so rendered and polished, it can be like, how did you get there? And so... Like this one, for example, it is uh, like this is pretty, pretty gorgeous. Um, it didn't look like it was chiseled. Mm -hmm. Certainly, like right I, I would, yeah, I would imagine that this one would have been. Um, yeah, like, all right. So what is the point of this? We are interested in tattoos and stuff, right? Why are we looking at these old drawings? It's like, to me, it really seems uh, evident, right? That if you want to do that black and gray that everybody really loves, <laughs> approaching your subject in this way, with the sort of, with a simple, this is simplified and highly graphic, right? And I think it's more, I think in a lot of ways, it's, it's fairly effective. Um, and so this might be a really interesting way to, uh, you know, approach learning like the black and gray that you would like to do. Um, and what's really nice too, is like a lot of it has this strong calligraphic line, this strong edge, especially, you know, when we it have- It lends itself to tattooing very well. I think so. Uh, maybe what not these exact- problems is pushing my darks dark enough in my mm. tattoos. Right. And, uh, and perhaps like, you know, if you are copying a copy of somebody else's copy of a copy you know it's like things get lost in the translation mm. and, um, you know you may you may return to nature let's say when you were 
designing stuff, you may be able to capture something that got lost in the, you know, in the stylization as it were. Um, yeah, really, really love these, um, these examples here, beautiful arms and stuff. Wanted to get mm -hmm. in, I'm going to scroll through, wanted to get into a face before we, uh, before we read something. Yeah, arms and legs. It seems it's almost like you see this line drawing. It's so simple. Um, and it's almost like, oh, hey, I could do that. Right? <laughs> it is challenging. It right? pictures but, like this that make people that can't draw think drawing is easy. Right. No, I think that's uh, um, that's certainly common. But also uh, this, it takes years and years of practice to be able to you know, nail this down. But having a little bit of insight uh, you know, can make that practice more effective, hopefully for the projects that you want to develop. Um, you might find this like stuffy and outdated as well. So I'm, you know, I think there's a, uh, there's certainly room for, you know, there's room for all sorts of criticism. All right, here's some faces. Um, I'll get to one and I think I can, uh, yeah, right. So again, we have this sort of negative on negative, um, uh, as it as it were, uh, and it's and it's very uh, uh, still has a, a strong graphic kind of quality to it, right? This outline really defines the shape, but these really strong shadow shapes give it a lot of presence, as it were. You can clearly start to see that this. Uh, well, we'll call it an object, but it certainly has the shape of a head. Like it has dimensionality, uh, rather than just everything flat, flat, flat. It you know it really starts to starts to turn, as it were. That's the that's kind of the concept that it turns in the light. So um, what I want to do, all right. Uh, what I want to do is I forgot what <laughs> I forgot what page I was on, but let's see. Jump to um, ah. This is pretty close to uh, pretty close to where I wanted to start. So just to kind of keep it, you know, casual today. Um, there's a lot of really great information in the book as far as the history of of this type of drawing and the history of uh, yeah. Um, this the history of this type of drawing, and then of course, you know, just uh, um, like an overall like approach to how you would uh, how you would go about it, including the materials. So right here, just to start with, um, and something that I think is, is pertinent, not to lose you, this idea of values and modeling. You know, we understand, uh, you know, uh, we understand probably quite a bit of tonal value, especially if you are an artist with some experience or you've been, um, you know, following following us in any way, you, you know, we definitely have talked about this quite a few times, but let's get into the reading. Okay. In art theory and practice, the term value refers to the lightness or darkness of an area exposed to light. Some writers substitute tone for value. It can also be used to describe the absolute brightness of an object seen or imagined as being without shadow or reflection on its surface. This even value is sometimes called the local value of the object. For example, a gray object has a darker local value than a white one. In nature, values reveal the geometry of an object in relation to a light source. For instance, each side of a cube will have a different value because each has different spatial orientation to the light source, a different amount of received light, and to the viewer, a unique perspective. Similarly, the values will be affected by the kind of light hitting, uh, it, whether it's direct, diffused, or reflected, and by the strength of the light source, whether it's a bright or a dim light source. These distinctions all present difficult problems for the artist. In drawing the transcription of relative values of an object called modeling, there are three techniques for modeling, stumping, uh, veiling, and hatching. Stumping is the rubbing of the drawing medium into the paper, usually with the pointed end of a paper tightly rolled into a stick called stump. Due to the cleanliness and precision of the stump, it's preferable to the fingertip. 
stumping produces a soft atmospheric uh, effect. The second technique, veiling, involves drawing faint lines with a pencil or charcoal tip lightly over the paper's grain. This technique alters the value very subtle, in a very subtle manner. The effect may appear like uh, much like translucent veils or glazes. Veiling is useful when modeling delicate forms in the light and where the curvature is gradual. Hatching, the third method, is the building up of dark value by means of thin parallel lines when each line is crossed over at angles. It is often called cross-hatching. This is essentially an engraver's technique. Some purists who want uh, all the effects in a drawing to be the product of pure line in favor of hatching over stumping. Hatching can strengthen the modeling achieved by stumping and veiling. Moreover, hatching adds linear direction when drawn axially and helps to create the illusion of foreshortening when drawn transversely in perspective. Basically, you know, the tech, those technical terms are telling us that the hatching, those lines that we were talking about that would go across the form would start to add to the, the sense of its volume. Mm -hmm. It would help to make the face look more full, if you like, <laughs> because the way that the lines are hatched. So kind of a, care, a you know, at least a considerate approach to it would, would yield some uh, in, in effect, if you like. I think this is really applicable to to a tattoo, for instance, right? Like if if you're really, I, I I know that it's it's easy to get into this sort of headspace, but if you're just, you know, you're just working and working away, uh, and you're not thinking about this, how the shape really could benefit from moving, you know, from the direction of of the marks that you're making, um, you know, that's it's an opportunity that you could that you could possibly you know take advantage of. You could start to render you know start the modeling as we're talking about of the tones in your in your work and it could add another and it could add another uh, layer of of interest so yeah right. when i started doing black and gray tattoos i did you know the gray wash scale with mags and liners for the edges mm -hmm. and i found you know and it looked more like the paper stump effect Sure. And I found that I I understand black and gray tattooing much better using mostly liners or um round shaders. And thinking of it in terms of cross hatching and stippling and you know the different textures you could use for in, in that kind of black and gray work. And I don't go to the gray scale inks as much because I build up my darks with cross hatching and more layers. Absolutely. Um, and then <laughs> again, you know, like if you have a cylinder or something and you're sort of, you're hatching the models, the, the form of it, like it's going around it. Yeah. Uh, you're bending your lines to show the form and the volume of it. Mm-hmm. And that makes the eye travel in that direction and trick your mind into thinking it's three-dimensional. Now, it's a basic idea, what we're talking about. Uh, and it's easy maybe to do with a, you know, a cylinder. It gets more complex when you're dealing <clears throat> with like a, you know, a more organic form, with, you know, yeah. a human-like uh, form. So, uh, so it takes practice, but... But thinking about it, you know, sort of in starting to internalize it in some way can be a really, you know, good place to start, as it were. So, all right, we're moving on, right? Procedure for modeling. Step one, the same rule. Work from general to specific. This applies to modeling as well as line drawing. Begin with a large, dark, generalized shadow. Fill it in evenly while referring to the finished drawing. You may schematize the boundaries in your drawing, but remember that the edge of a shadow is seldom abrupt. Still, in the area is either light uh, or in shadow, and the difference must be made clear. Once added, shadows to the illusion of sculptural relief. In the modeling of shadows, Bard downplayed reflected light, which in nature would flood the shadows of an actual white plaster cast. The simple shadows were much uh, were most likely maintained 
using a controlled direct light and placing a cast in a shadow box. Three side open box lined with black paper or cloth. Uh, this diminishes the reflected light. So again, uh, just to kind of reiterate what's being said there, when we look at the, um, is there one up here? When we look at these, these casted drawings, right? These really strong sorts of uh, shadows that are here, right? You might, uh, you might perceive when you're looking at it in real life, you might perceive much more of the reflected light, right? It might be, uh, may not be quite so strong, but in this method, we're, you know, you're really playing up the that really strong contrast right? yeah and contrast isn't just about going darker that's not what that's not what that means contrast is about difference um and guy Atchison goes into that into great detail in reinventing and i find it's really helpful because i think so often that's really the case uh, you know people kind of get it twisted right they're just thinking like gotta go darker gotta go darker well you have to have something for that dark to um to resist if you like or to be you know in to be in tension with right there's a tension between the light and the dark and so when when you have uh, when you have an area that you want people to focus on, you give it this really strong tension of contrast of light, dark and and uh, and light. And then, of course, you can make things become more subtle by adding a little bit more tone to it. And I think that it's so easy. I know that I have this tendency, like I'm focused on an area, and like as I look at it longer, I start to see all of these small tones. Oh, there's all these little details and stuff and you go in there and you start to like render that out. And then before you know it, you've really reduced the contrast. And then it kind of like in a, in a, in a real way, it becomes way less interesting. You forgot um, the biggest rule. Your dark, your lightest dark has to be darker than your darkest light. And I uh, forget that shit all the time. <laughs> and then I got to go back in with the eraser and add the highlights and get rid mm -hmm. of some of the nuances because it looks great on paper, but it's not going to transfer to tattoo it. Yeah, it certainly is um, <laughs> certainly tough uh, when it's with a tattoo. Um, yeah, a lot of those lightest nuance shades are just going to fall out. Yeah, so Kyle has a couple of questions. Like, is this something you know? Was this something that you would uh, you would do uh, in the direction of the? Would you tattoo in the direction of the cross hatching? I think that this is something to consider. I really do. I think you know, so removing your tattoo in the direction of the cross hatching can be a really um, you know good way to go. Mm -hmm. And then, um, would this be something that we would need to consider when tattooing in general? Not so much just applying the tattoo, but uh, when we stroke or color pack well you know i think that i think that like uh in reality like in real terms your color packing is still uh lots of marks <laughs> you know what i mean like it's the illusion of a solid area that's kind of how i do my color packing because doing the old-fashioned way and just doing mm -hmm. the circles over yeah. each other again it, it wasn't working for me so I will fill the space one in one direction and then go back over it in the other direction to create a cross hatch of color and it spreads out a lot better. Totally. Uh, and especially once you've run over it once and really opened up the skin, mm -hmm. the second pass in the other direction seems to go in better. Right. So uh, with experience, you're going to learn how to manage that. But also, you may start to find that if if you are uh, packing in the color, and it you know it starts to have a general kind of movement, if it's if you can get it like dead flat, um, I think that's that's an amazing ability, right? But I would I would imagine that like if you really are if you're very you know thorough 
and you look at it from all different angles, you're probably going to notice there's, there might be one, you know what I mean? Where it's just a little bit, there's a little bit of difference. This could be totally contingent on, you know, like the body part you're working on, you know, the particular lights you're looking at it with. Um, so a body is dimensional, right? So that might be a way that you think about it. I don't have an answer here, but I do think that like, I don't know, considering it can be very, uh, it can be a very important uh, practice to, you know, to, to internalize. Um, let's, let's finish up what we were reading here. Uh, so step two, after drawing the shadows, analyze the value of the halftones and place them in the drawing. Halftone is a variant of value between light and dark, say white and black. There are usually several halftones or graduated value uh, in a drawing. In the early stages of the course, the finished drawings are separated into three values, one for the shadow, another for the halftone area, and the white of the paper for the lights. Both the main halftone area and the shadows are clearly indicated. However, the transition from the halftones to the light area requires care. Notice that the halftones can appear quite dark next to the lights and be mistaken for a shadow. On a scale of values from 1 to 9, where 9 is the value of the paper and 1 is the darkest mark that a pencil or charcoal can make, the halftones on a white cast are around 5 or 6. The average shadow is 4, which is a little darker than the value of the halftones. So, um, this is exactly what we were just talking about, Amber, like that you uh, you need to have a careful consideration of the contrast, the lightest and the darkest areas, and how do you sort of maintain that? Um, and you certainly don't want to put like, you know, this too much, too much like detail, too much emphasis in this light area. Um, you might be able to get away with putting a little bit of render on it. And I think we see that, you know, with, with really, uh, you know, with like really excellent, really excellent work. Um, you can see organized crosshatch, uh, hold on, show Kyle's. Organized crosshatch compared to absolute chaos makes sense. Yeah, thank you, Kyle. I, I think exactly that's Exactly how I thought about it, because I was going nuts. No matter how many times Jake showed me how to color pack, it was just coming out blotchy and not, and I'm like, that's not how I instinctively feel like this should be done. Right. Um, I think that's a really good point, and we all probably we're all going to have to, you know, struggle with it a, a bit. There's only so much explanation that you can get until you really have to like, test it. Yeah, and, you work with the medium and figure out what works best for your style of making marks mm -hmm. and how you understand the, you know, the project in general. Mm -hmm. So here's step number three. Right. The darkest major shadow has been filled in. The half tones are blended into the shadow and graded, gradated towards the light area. This can be extended to complete the modeling uh, by a recording of every value. Uh, and so there's there are some references if you get this book. Um, you can check out at this point. Um, those references, they're going to illustrate this gradual lightening of values from the shadow into the half tones and from the half tones into the light as well as the delicate transitions within the light itself. Here too, the halftones and lighter values describe complex forms as along the border of the scapula, around the dimples, near the sacrum. Pay attention to the degree of, to, to the degree of lightness and darkness represented in the finished cast drawing. Each value relates to the other values, yet holds its place in the total effect. Notice the values of the halftone area. Uh, to areas along the main shadows where the curvature of the form is more acute. There are a few half tones, a gentle curve that produces a, that produces more. Despite the range of values used in the modeling of the torso, Barg presented a simplification of values and forms without confusing uh, proliferation of detail. Um, and such control is a hallmark of the classical style. And so um, I think... Uh, I think what I'd like to do is sort of show, um, I think this might be close. This is, this would be the, yes. 
this would be an example of the the difference of in this rendering approach right this approach to rendering this is what's known as the julian method and we can see like all of this uh reflected light especially in this sort of area under the chin the the the, the canopy of the of the jaw here right you see all this reflected light and stuff you can see all this light here and the you know here by the headband and the um you know and the hair and stuff uh again same kind of thing right it's very um very detailed in these in these shadow areas right under the chin in the back of the hair um this was you know this was kind of the standard for the classical approach this is the difference again we'll, we'll come back to the, look at this guy right this is again a, the julian method and then the barg method is here's the difference right so subtle but there's a strong emphasis on these really dark darks basically becoming almost lost if you like they're very very dark especially you know we just compare these two approaches barg right versus this julian one the julian one looks like um vincent price totally <laughs> totally but i i think the point is that like you know if you were if you were in the studio and you're staring at this like plaster cast of you know like this statue right you're just staring at it you would probably see this cheek as you know this would probably be a little closer to what you were you know seeing there'd be reflected in light that would hit it um and that's again that it, there's a beauty to this um it is very challenging to sort of you know to balance that as compared to this it is uh certainly simpler but in a way you may find it you may find it more uh effective because there's a really strong graphical quality uh that you're able to achieve right so um yeah no i feel like uh this is what we're kind of talking about um there's an interpretation that has to take place here right um especially you know so for tattooers you are tattooing you're looking at a photograph right you're trying to you know you really you're really giving it your best and trying to make it as sort of true to the photo as you can right it's easy to get all lost in this half tone we would call it right that's what that's what the that's what the author is calling it that's what uh you know that's what it is right um you're making all these really dark areas half tone um where if you just push it right like like amber like you were talking about earlier you really push those dark values you might very well find that it's it's just a bit more effective and then to kyle's kyle olson's point if you really start to think about the direction that you're sort of making all of these um areas of solid dark or even you know even the way that you might hatch or start to push the value around to give us the volume um like sculpt yeah yeah i think it is it is really there is a real uh analogy to sculpting and stuff there too and again so there might be a little bit of stumping that's happened here but then there are lines that are definitely going across there's a certainly a grain to this paper that they're using all of those factors are at play skin has a grain too it really does you know so anybody that's been tattooing for a while will know right that there's definitely a you know just look at the way your hairs grow out of the pores right there's a grain to the to the skin and so and as you are uh, da, 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 da. Kyle has another question or another comment. Let's see it. And would this be something that would you need to consider when tattooing in general, not so much applying the tattoo? Oh, that was a uh, wait. Here's your. Did you do a new one? Yeah. That was um, again. Really appreciate all the uh, you know everybody in the chat. Um, and uh, I really appreciate everybody you know 
checking out this uh, checking out this method. And so I'm gonna share the QR code uh, for this book. So if you are interested, it's a whole course that you can that you can pick up yourself. And you might find that uh, there's something that is really applicable to your tattooing. Um, or you're drawing more generally, right? You know, just uh, um, now, this is just a method. I'm not trying to claim that this is like the, you know, the answer or the way. You might, you might find it useful. Though. You really Actually, dedicate some time to it. And a part of it too, a whole part of it is like all those, all those really rudimentary line drawings that you saw. Those are all made through what's called site sizing. So, so the students would learn, you know, they would use like a plumb line. So a weight on a, on a string and they would hold it up, you know, so they would have a vertical line and then they would do all sorts of measurements based on, on this. It was very painstaking. I think the point is, or that we can take away from it is slowing down. Sure, we need to sketch quickly and do, you know, do all kinds of different types of drawing. Maybe there is something that's really important and valuable about really slowing down and taking your time, whether that's through measurement, whether that's through careful consideration of like tonal values and, and whatnot. There's a um, almost a self, you have to kind of overcome yourself as you were, you know, like I, I can be pretty hyper often, and that can be difficult to get into the you know, get into the drawing sometimes. Um, mm. But with drawing, I think that's for me personally, that's where I'm able to find the most focus. Drawing, reading, writing, these are the things that I can, you know, can focus on. When I'm like, uh, you know, when I have to like uh, <laughs> make a spreadsheet or something like that or do my taxes, it's like, I just, you know, it's so easy to, to lose focus, right? There's probably all kinds of places where it's easy to lose your focus. With drawing, I, I'm able to get there to a point where I can focus, where I can actually um, uh, lose myself in it. Yeah, exactly. Or art and music and, you know, reading and things like that, they're stimulating to me in a way that calms me down. Yes. Yes. Trying to focus doing the dishes is impossible. But <laughs> I spend all day in the art world and mm. all 9 a.m. turns into 9.30 at night. And I'm like, shit. No, I was supposed I, to do it today. Mm. Well, um, thank you, Amber, so much for coming. Um it was cool no. to catch up with Creature and see what Creature's got going on. Uh, uh, oh, our space, yeah, beautiful space. And again, we're, um, uh, I think we're all excited to see each other do well and succeed. And so, uh, you know, so I'm really, I'm glad to, to see success happening. And, um, and again, I hope that you all out there uh, enjoyed as well and that you will continue to, to draw, to con to continue to to sort of seek out this knowledge and information. That's um, we have this amazing opportunity, right, to access like like this hidden knowledge. It was it was so closely guarded. It feels like for so long, and now it's very available. All you have to do is get out there and dig in and really work on it. Um, and I think that maybe that's the whole key to it is that you really got, you know what I mean? Like there isn't a secret that's going to like make you automatically be able to do the thing, but you can be interested in the stuff you're interested in and you can work on it. And, um, and there's a whole, there's a whole arc of like understanding how bad you are at something, <laughs> you know, like you, the more that you learn about it, the, the more you really kind of understand that, You'll, you know, you'll never be able to hold the whole thing. You'll never be able to be the, um, you know, the perfect example of this. Um, yeah. 
order to do things right, you first have to do things you don't know how to do. Yeah. No, I, I think that is a... Uh, knowing how to do something. Yeah, it's a really good point. I want to... Uh, we're going to close it out today. And I just want to thank you again. Amber, where can we uh, where can we find you at? You can find me on all social media platforms under Amber Morgan. That's excellent. Uh, thank you again for coming. We want to uh, want to thank uh, Tattoo Now. Absolutely. I've got a uh, I've got a I've got a QR code. I can Tattoo Now. Tattoo Now is uh, um, technology for tattooers. Uh, they've got mailing lists, CRM that is very competitive with, uh, you know, with all the offerings out there. So, you know, you can learn more about tattoo now and it's really going to help you out with your communicating to your clients. Um, kind of in a way it can help get your, get you your life back. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, um, Hey, good morning, Jason. Lee here. So great to hear from you. Um, Right. And, uh, well, there's so many more things coming up. Uh, I want to plug one more time, change the QR code, or maybe it was the same. Learn more about reinventing the tattoo by visiting reinventingthetattoo.com. We'd like to thank Guy Atchison for being the founder and inspiration behind reinventing the tattoo and the reinventing the tattoo community. So, uh, Thanks, Guy. Thanks, Gabe, for everything you do behind the scenes. I know that it's, uh, uh, you know, it's a labor of love. <laughs> it's a labor of love. Um, and so we really appreciate the space. Uh, and again, thank you for joining us out there. Uh, if, you know, if you, uh, you know, you ever want to join us, you can find access at the, on the homepage of Reinventing the Tattoo. There's a, 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 always a link. It's freshly updated every week, and you can, you can click and beam in if you'd like to ever be a part of these live streams. Um, I'm James Wisdom. This has been Drawing for Tattooers. Uh, I want to wish everybody, uh, you know, happy drawing, and uh, we'll see you all next stream. All right, bye. Have a great week.